Hello everyone, welcome back to The Kitchen Table. Today on The Kitchen Table we have another guest, not live uh, in person this time, but live from across the Atlantic. We're going to be talking to uh, Mr. Patrick Egan of airvid.com and from the UAV Humanitarian uh, Awards as well. Uh, welcome to you, Patrick. Hello, thank you for having me. That's quite all right. And we're, we're going to talk about a wide range of things and we'll we'll discuss a bit more about Patrick in a, in a second. But as is traditional on the kitchen table, we have to have a beverage. Now, um, uh, for me, it's a very, uh, a very pleasant quarter past nine at night. So I'm on the wine and I've made a very rare venture to France for the uh, Domaine de la Tourie Grenache Syrah Mourvedre from uh, Pédoc in France, uh, so uh, that's good. But I believe, Patrick, looking there, you may have something of your own you've brought. Well, of course, I was inspired by your um, by your your, your videos. Uh, this is a, a Tomasi Viticoltori. It's Italian. It's a Rapasso 2013. Um, I've had this bottle a few times. Um, nobody really recommended it to me, but it was a nice find and really enjoyable. It's uh, twenty two dollars Canadian, so it's uh, it's on the higher end of our uh, of our price range for the we call it a mid range, but uh, it's it's. It's, it's beautiful. I like it. Excellent. Well, two recommendations for the price of one. So um, uh, cheers to everyone. Oh, cheers. Mm. So, um, Patrick Egan, uh, for those who don't know, Patrick is, how, how should we describe you, Patrick? Should we describe you as um, a businessman, entrepreneur, self-confessed geek, yes. um, um, a photographer, videographer, um, a drone enthusiast, um, possibly drone evangelist? Well, I would say, the mass, uh, what do you call it? Jack of all trades, master of none. I've, <laughs> I've had uh, a wide variety of experience, um, you know, starting off in uh, the early days of manufacturing uh, visual aids products, things like uh, marker boards, whiteboards, uh, presentation boards, etc. My uh, my father invented the marker board in a cabinet, and uh, about 25 years after that, I uh, I got a patent on um, the a large area touchscreen. So one of the first um, a large area whiteboards, so touch sensitive, draw right on it with a, a dry erase marker. Got a patent, and and so that was my kind of start into technology. But I'm an aviation enthusiast. Uh, I'm, I'm a pilot, a uh, private pilot, um, and uh, I love I love anything that flies and. Uh, yeah, it's. It, I mean, it's just this. This technology, drone technology, is a convergence and just an amalgamation of everything that I thought was cool in life, and I just had to take advantage of it. Well, that's 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 a pretty glowing. Um, it's a pretty glowing <laughs> testament to your enthusiasm. Um, yeah. And and that sort of I think that's manifested itself in two ways because from um, uh, you've sort of started to put together a, a kind of like a network of drone professionals but you've also I, I think it's fair to say you've also been very keen to sort of heavily promote the the positive use of drones not just for doing lovely things like taking people's aerial videos but we're talking about actually how they can help people how they can help the uh, world ab absolutely you know um I, I i guess like anything and you know particularly in north america and uh the, the u.s you've got um, this kind of fear fear-based marketing, you know, whether it be politics or whether it be, um, you know, just uh, selling newspapers, people want to accentuate the, accentuate the, um, the, the worst in things. I, I mean, so you, you've got this new technology, it's disruptive, it, we're calling it the Orville Wright in, in, in its, in, in, call it in its infancy. So people are going to be afraid of it. You know, you think about how many car accidents there are every day and it's not making national uh, news, every single fender bender, you know, and, and, and that's what's happening now, you know? And so you've got this hundred years of maturity of, of, of the automotive. And then you've got what the 1950s was the seatbelt 1970s and eighties was the airbag. I mean, we're going to innovate our way through these, these challenges. And, uh, and so anyway, you know, just on that note, um, the, when you've got this kind of call it sensationalist media, you know, we need to kind of counter that with our own sensationalism about what's great about drones. And, and, uh, and so myself and Oliver O'Brien from uh, the UK Drone Show and Patrick uh, Meyer from um, uaviators.org uh, got together and we cooked up a thing called the UAVHA, which is Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Humanitarian Award. Um, and it's actually focusing more on the people and the applications versus the technology itself. Um, and so that's one of our latest initiatives to uh, kind of push the drones for good concept. 
Yeah, and that, that's where I sort of first first came across the thing because this is going to be um, these are awards they're, they're sort of being voted on um, as we speak, and then the winners are going to be announced at the UK Drone Show in oh, December yeah. at the. Oh, we've got we've got some great um, here. Just uh, I'm, excuse me, I'm just going to flip over here to the UAVH UAVHA.com. So we got Patrick Meyer as a as a judge, Brendan Schulman, who's now the in-house counsel for DJI. He is. I noticed got, that job change recently. Yeah, we got Daniel Gilman, uh, who's uh, with the United Nations, uh, Edward Anderson with uh, World Bank, um, and one of your uh, one of your countrymen, Philip Bloom, um, who's a uh, photographer, um, Eric Cheng uh, with DJI, uh, myself, and and actually this this is one of my favorite guys, a guy by the name of Robert Scoble. He's uh, he's a futurist and an evang a tech evangelist in 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 uh, he's located in the states, but he's worldwide. He must have half a million followers, and literally. Um, uh, he's got. He's always ahead of the ahead of the curve when it comes to technology. We've got um, Randy Slavin from the um, uh, New York City Drone Film Festival. Colin Gwynn from Three Three DR. Uh, Abby Weaver from the American Red Cross. Um, uh, and uh, and we've also got uh, Matteo Triaca from uh, Sensefly and another DJI uh, director of marketing for Western uh, Europe, uh, Kevin Gordon. So we've got kind of coverage from Sensefly, from DJI, um, uh, 3DR. Um, we're we're trying to you know it, it it's a call it um uh, sorry I apologize here I'm going to pop my screen back up it's a how do you call it? Um, we're the we're the Switzerland of <laughs> we're, the, we're the Switzerland of of of, uh, of award shows. Yeah, yeah, agnostic as to manufacturer, um, exactly. <laughs> that kind of thing. But and actually, that's but that is a. Uh, and although you know it's it, it's amusing to talk about it, it's actually an important point, and I think it's quite good to see that. And let's face it, DJI and 3DR are, are perhaps uh, you know seen commercially as as fighting for the same space in the ready to fly kind of market. Yes. Um, so it's good to see that they're coming together. And even if the 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 kind of the driver behind it was well, you know, it's good PR. That's how things start. Get people together is the key thing, and then if everyone then agrees to go forward i think that's a great and it's a it's it's a really good that you've got people there who are also outside the drone space yeah who are able yeah. to look at it from you know because otherwise it's it's a little bit easy for all kind of drone geeks it's a bit easy to get kind of teched out by the most uh, advanced solution but sometimes it might be the most simplest technology used in the most effective way if it's just if it's technology for technology sake, it's simply going to flame out, right? You've got to have the application there and 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 the reasoning. And I mean, you know, I know we talked about marketing uh, in in terms of you know different manufacturers and the drone show and and all of this kind of stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is that the the real uh, inspiration behind actually starting a company, I I kind of envision this concept of uh, a major news organization uncovering some breaking news and. And, and being able to go on the site, find a pilot uh, somewhere and, and deploy that pilot uh, instantaneously to cover some, you know, major thing like whether it be Kiev or, uh, or the, the, Hong Kong, uh, the Hong Kong riots um, to give people a sense of scale and to give people a sense of, you know, elevating perspective really is what it comes down to, you know, and that's kind of the inspiration behind AirVid originally, uh, despite it's, uh, it's more... Uh, you know, hopefully at some point in time, we'll, I'll make some money. But <laughs> at the moment right now, we don't charge anything. And, and it's a labor of love. So, so, so yeah, so Airvid, which is, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but but my, my understanding is that, the, the, as you say, that was the, the genesis behind it was trying to get uh, get this 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 high, this aerial perspective of, of things, mm -hmm. but being able to do it quickly, but, but also with people who are, uh, Safe yeah, pilots, responsible. You know, we're we're not talking about somebody who you can quickly get a cell phone who's basically just bought one of these two days ago and decides to go up. So the idea behind it was a network of, you know, people who take the role professionally and seriously, either but both yeah. as pilots and as videographers, who who yeah. who people who don't have access to the technology in far from places could could go to Evan and say, we need someone to take a look at these wildfires in Borneo or the, the logging that's happening in the jungle or something like that. And then you would be able to put them in contact. Oh, yeah. Well, local. 
Yeah, there's no question with um, with a you know the technology itself. Uh, you know, first of all, it's new. Um, and, you know, so there's not a lot of redundancy on it. There's so many single points of failure: the controller, um, the battery, um, you know, all of those types of things. So you know, when we're talking about technical technical innovation, you've got that technical side of it where we need to have you know maybe uh, you know uh, simultaneous uh, uh, controllers going, simultaneous batteries, all back you know all backed up. But at the same time, you know, if you apply the the the, the paradigm of being an actual uh, fixed wing pilot or or, or, or helicopter pilot uh, to the game, um, you know, people can get distracted by having too much coffee, by um, by uh, not enough sleep, by distraction, by having people take photos of them. You know, if you've got a, a police officer harassing um, some pilot on a beach and the, there's something in the air, you know, there's this education that has to go on, uh, not only of the pilots themselves, but of people uh, communicating with those pilots so that um, that they do that. Now, of course, the only way to do that is through, is through training and experience. And uh, that's something that we seek um, wholeheartedly with with Airvid is one thing to have you know okay I've got the certification but can you demonstrate your ability and that's one thing that we do with all of the pilots is we literally um, you know we make sure that you know they've got insurance make sure that they're certified you know obviously this started before all of this actually came into play for example in the U.S. we had to you know we had 100 pilots before there was even rules surrounding it, you know, and um, and so we were kind of a little bit ahead of the curve there. But, you know, as time passes um, in all countries that have proper certifications, we want to make sure that they're 100 percent certified, 100 percent insured and that they're capable. You know, it's one thing to throw a logo on and throw uh, throw something up in the air. But if you're um, if, if your work is poor, I don't want to attach our brand to it. So, you know, that's that's one thing. Um, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to disenfranchise people who are getting started and new. So, you know, we do want to have um, a kind of a, a training aspect to uh, to the site, um, which will uh, move along. And then also mentorship to be able to bring uh, newer pilots up. So, for example, there was a great article recently about LUTs, you know, um, lookup tables for um, color correction in, in, in photography. So, all you know, we, we've got a group and then we go in and we talk about the different uh, filters that you can apply to uh, footage to be able to make them look a little bit better, a little bit sharper, a little bit greener, you know, and, and that sort of thing. So it's it's a it's a holistic process. It's changing daily, and, and but we're having fun. Okay, so so that's looking at things from the professional or the aspiring professional side. And yes. as you know, in the UK, there is actually a framework for people who want to 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 operate commercially, who want to to use drones for rewards. Then they have to go through uh, a certain uh, competency training, and then they have to get a, a permission from our civil aviation authority. So we've got quite a, a well-established structure for that. But I had an interesting. Um, I think discussion might be flattering a bit. An interesting, uh, some comments coming up on some of my older videos talking about safety and, and getting qualified. You want to do it from people going, look, you know, I've bought one of these in my local kind of big box store. And why shouldn't I be able to go and fly it wherever I want? What's this? Well, no, don't fly it over crowds if I want to do this, that and the other. Um, so I think as well as making sure that we've got professionals, I think there's a lot of, a lot of work to be done on perhaps, um, educating the uh, the newcomer to drones recreationally about perhaps why some of these restrictions or safety recommendations are in place i mean i'm i'm a lapsed private pilot a long time ago but again those of us who've been in aviation i think we have a slightly a slightly different viewpoint of of safety uh, yes. than those that haven't and we have perhaps slightly more awareness about the kind of things that can go wrong in the third dimension up there um yes. uh, when you hit aircraft but what what are your thoughts on on the kind of the <laughs> the, the problems that we see perhaps with people who've just i'd say bought them no training some of them are sold as being you know really easy anyone can fly and then the, the, we do end up with uh you know things in you the know, white house uh, and uh yeah. Well, I, I guess that's it. It's it's that technological innovation. It is at the um, it is at the uh, the horse. You know, the, the the single cylinder motor days of things. You know, um, I know we're probably eight eight to ten years into the actual uh, multi rotor technology. If uh, if if I was to put a timeline to it, 
just in terms of its modern form. Um, obviously, as things are uh, getting uh, advancing, processor speeds are increasing, um, and and, uh, and then that framework of let's say aerial hubs or drone hubs. Uh, or drone airways, let's call them. Um, as those types of things evolve, whether it be T, you know, uh, TCAS, for example, you know, having a C mode transponder, uh, altitude uh, uh, trans transmitting uh, respond uh, transponder going back to a server, and it will be as simple as the aircraft in flight, a 777, 737, whatever, even a single engine Cessna coming in. Um, the plane, the manned aircraft is going to have priority. It's like power over sail in, 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 in boating. I think that it'll just simply be a matter of, you know, just a, a change in direction or an altitude separation uh, that we, that just automatically occurs. So that type of thing is going to happen. Um, you know, more, uh, call it, you know, from battery life or number of GPSs, maybe, like you said, you're talking about DJI with the, the, picking up 16 satellites, maybe the, the, the device won't fly if there's only seven, you know, or maybe there's, um, if there's solar flares going off that the entire system shuts down, you know, like whatever technology happens, it's going to innovate to a point of safety because it's just too cost effective to perform missions and missions meaning, you know, whether it be, you know, windmill inspections or, or, um, and, uh, uh, vegetation indexing, uh, for, um, infrared and uh, all those kinds of things that, that, that these device mapping photogrammetry, all of these things, uh, are just so inexpensive and so easy and so accessible that we're not going to stop this, this, it's like trying to hold beach in your hands you just can't you know yeah yeah no no I, no i i fully see that so but that's interesting though do you therefore foresee a time when basically um stick and rudder skills um are going to be out of the equation for anything anything heavier than because I, I, from what you're saying it sounds to me like the perhaps the way forward is is uh if it's if it's above a certain mass or has a certain potential to do damage then we run on as many automatics as we can if it's park flyer territory whizzing around then great but there has to be some sort of well you know it's, it's funny that you crossing. say that i think it's an awesome point because it just brings up that whole concept of these fpv pilots right so i think right now we've got a massive video game generation coming along going okay this is great i'm playing uh you know uh far cry 4 or um or what's that one uh Grand Theft Auto, and they've got these skills, and now they're getting out there and flying FPV. And these guys, like these top pilots, are not not only the best drone pilots or UAV pilots; they're actually the, manned or unmanned, bar none. They're probably a more technical skill and ability, and and 3D spatial perception than anyone out there right now. And so these guys that are flying these courses and stuff like that, I think they're going to be a feeding ground for commercial pilots. So it's probably one of the first sports that's actually got some long-term uh, benefit. So I bet you these guys coming out, whether it be, you know, major hydro companies that are going to go out and source pilots for their stuff, they're going to be looking for people who can, you know, inspection. Say, for example, you've got a, a large oil tank and you want an internal inspection and somebody, you know, obviously it's metal clad. You can't get GPS signal through it, these guys are going to be able to fly around in these devices or in these spaces, whether it be stacks or tight spaces and, and shielded spaces and be able to, uh, you know, skillfully manipulate um, a UAV or a drone. And I think that the FPV is going to be the first guy. So yes, I think there's got to be that, that pure uh, airmanship combined with uh, the most redundant technologies possible. Cool. No, it's 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 very true. It's um, it, I, I as you say, I suspect that the 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 prime jobs will go for the most skilled pilots, and they're going to be the ones who are used to flying something now without GPS, without automatics, yeah. uh, and and perhaps these kind of very high risk uh, environments, very high danger environments. The the actual kind of aircraft that are going to be doing those inspections are not going to be getting bigger and bigger. They're actually going to be getting smaller and smaller yeah. to go into smaller and smaller spaces where, as you say. No GPS, you're not going to be able to be bailed out. You better have some stick and rudder skills. And if yeah. you've honed those by by drone racing around the, an FPV track like there's going to be at the UK drone show, for example, then you may be a prime candidate to um yeah uh, you know to to be employed in that in that basis. Yeah, that's really interesting. Sure. And 
the other thing I, I noticed that is that there is at the UK drone show as well as FPV racing, all this cool stuff and the humanitarian awards as well. Yep. There's actually an AirVid zone. I noticed there's a yeah. rather nice mock up of the AirVid. So what, what's the AirVid zone then? Well, the, the AirVid zone um, unto itself is basically, uh, I think a, a cooperative agreement between the UK drone show and ourselves to offer pilots um, some visibility within uh, the actual event itself. So they're selling, um, I think, what is it? Uh, let me look on the page here. Um, I, I sent you over a link, but um, for 249 pounds, um, you basically uh, get a presence at the at the show. Um, we have these kind of poster cards. Uh, the Each of the pilot is represented by almost like a trading card. Uh, on our website uh, when you when you view the different pilots and so they're gonna have blow-ups of those and then uh, part of their reel running on a loop a continuous loop at the show and so those pilots are welcome to attend that booth and you know uh, uh, hawk their wares so to speak um, and uh, and participate in the show access to the show etc so. Okay, so so it, it so it's a showcase, um, and, and obviously Airvid are involved, but it's specifically a showcase for for people yeah. who are operating in the UK or Europe, I guess, yeah. to, to who perhaps wouldn't get uh, that sort of level of exposure. Yeah, you might be you know spending a thousand or fifteen hundred to get your own booth there, but this is a kind of a, a call it a, a pop up, uh, you know, a smaller smaller booths within a booth sort of thing. So it's it's uh, the way uh, Oliver's put it together is pretty cool, you know. Yeah, yeah, and uh, we'll 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 show some 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 mock-ups of that, and it looks uh, it looks it looks very good indeed. Yeah. So that's that's another interesting aspect of it. So so we've got this kind of mix at the moment of um, of uh, the excitement of FPV racing, um, the the very still very early days of commercialization of the technology, and then in amongst all that is the guys like me who um, just enjoy flying the stuff and you know taking bad photographs and all that kind of stuff. So it's, it's looking it's looking pretty interesting. But one of the things that I'm really pleased that's happening though is I'm, I, I was actually really I think the 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 UAV Humanitarian Awards is 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 actually probably the most important thing there because for for wider people's perception the non-drone public yeah the wider perception is still that if they see one of these uh they're they're being snooped on spied uh people are flying them are up to no good and so on and so forth so i think it's great that we have a focus on actually you know in the right hands because any idiot can do anything bad with any technology Right. But in the right hands, these things are great. And I know, okay, you're a judge, so we can't have any favorites, but perhaps without naming names specifically, do you have a favorite um, or, a, or, a, or a, a, a humanitarian sort of use or a, a, a public uh, you know, safety use for a drone that you kind of think that was really something that was cool, not necessarily giving anything away, but just what, okay. what, what sort of flavor of some of the things that you found most interesting? Well, I mean, you know, there the, the 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 three the three or four things that we've been personally involved in in the in the past um, uh, that you know supplying uh, pilots for uh, was uh, uh, Patrick Meyer reached out to us for um, uh, Vanuatu, uh, so the cyclone there, uh, the Nepal earthquake, um, and uh, and um, uh, in um, West Africa, the uh, the Ebola outbreak there resonance, so they could basically check off their list that the um, that the healthcare uh, professionals were going and educating them on proper hygiene and things of that nature. So basically, um, you know, we provided lists of pilots, uh, qualified pilots, to to Patrick and his and his team, the UAVators.org, who then uh, went to the World Bank and, and the various uh, uh, groups to talk to. So that's one aspect, which is kind of, um, you know, the mapping aspect, uh, then also being able to quantify damage, you know, and they've got a really interesting um, thing, micro mappers, which is uh, an initiative where it's a crowdsourced review of aerial photography and video. So for example, they go to Vanuatu and they're looking at residences that have been destroyed. So you'll see remnants of a building. So basically school kids in Iowa or in Australia can be for their volunteer time potentially could be sitting there reviewing aerial photographs and pointing at different spots 
that were damaged and then you know it, it's done with two or three different people to cross-reference and then they sit there and they know where all the damage has occurred and it's done almost instantaneously they can because there's so many people involved with micro mappers uh, they can all collaboratively get together so some of these initiatives that are happening uh, that are utilizing the 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 um, the technology and utilizing the the imagery are actually saving lives, you know, and even furthermore, taking uh, sensors that are flying over uh, the rubble in, in 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 Nepal and sensing, you know, if they get there quick enough, they can sense the uh, cell phone signals that are still, like if the towers are down, they can sense the cell phone signals. So if somebody's possibly buried under, they can they can potentially find them, you, you know, using uh, triangulating a, a signal off of these things. So like it just goes on and on and on the amount of good that these things can do. And um, you know, there's not enough of that out there, and hopefully UABHA uh, gets to spread that word. So, so yeah, so. Uh, but I also understand that actually you you're you're still you're still looking uh, at, uh, at sort of open entries and you're still judging the awards. So um, uh, you know if you're keen for for more people to to oh. come and tell you about their, their their the missions that they've performed with their drones, yeah. No, not only just for the award itself, um, you know, just the you know to, to have more submissions, more things to look at, more things to review, and interesting stories to tell. Um, you know, the, the fact of the matter is, is that uh, we do want to find the people who are actually performing these missions and uh, be able to share their stories so that we can help, uh, the, you know, the Drones for Good kind of uh, kind of concept. So, you know, the, it, even if it's just like helping a community out with, you know, some conservation effort or, um, or, or uh, capturing some, some imagery that, that helps save a historic monument you know that sort of thing um you know that that to to us is conservation that to us is humanitarian you know it, it doesn't necessarily have to be a major disaster and and that sort of thing it's it's anything uh, will be uh, considered uh you know provided it's for the betterment of mankind no that's great and you know the, the enthusiasm is falling off the screen from you and yeah. i can I understand <laughs> why because you know uh, just you, as you mentioned these things i think that's what it just needs somebody needs to spark off these things as you mentioned like you know kids somewhere else having a look at that because if you think about it um satellite time expensive needs would need to be kind of pre-booked in advance helicopters you know t if you've got one of these and it's kind of primed and ready to go they can be in the air within uh, just just out well, for minutes if they're close and and, yes. and then because of the technology of being able to beam this stuff live stream it people can people can can really get involved which is which is great and and I think it's a really healthy antidote to the very, very, very small percentage of people who have the attitude that, hey, you know, I've bought this. It's my right to fly like an idiot if I want to. And, right. and I think the more that we can show that actually the vast, vast majority of people involved in drones are involved yeah. in it. Uh, if, if, if they're not involved in it in, in sort of humanitarian activities, they actually are considerate. They are not going to do any harm to anybody who's a passerby, uh, you know, most of us are good guys, and it's really nice to see at the very top level there are people who are not just being good guys, but they're actively helping to make people's lives well, better. You know, you, you just reminded me. I um, I took up kiteboarding a few years back, and um, and at certain uh, stages in my learning, uh, the 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 kite this this rig can just wipe you out. It's absolutely insane what the, the damage it can inflict. Um, and, but the, the, the neat part about it though, is, is the community. And, um, when you're on a beach and you're, the, the, there's a thing called a hot launch in, in kiteboarding. And so if your kite is directly downwind from you and you launch it, you are going to go flying, you know, you're going to take off physically, literally you're gone. And so, so basically what will happen is if, you know, so you're about to hot launch, somebody who's a little more experienced uh, is going to come over and tap you on the shoulder and go, hey, buddy, you know, are, are you thinking about it? And it's generally very respectful and kind and whatnot. So, you know, I think as the time continues and the community grows and the knowledge grows that we do need to to police each other and and people are so offended by being told what to do how to do to be informed i mean just we're, we're ultimately the more knowledgeable our ambassadors to this business and we need to behave in a classy manner and we need to uh, treat people with respect and and if we see somebody doing something really dumb it might be just because they just don't know and to go over there and and 
caution them on the risk of what they're doing, you know, I think is a fair uh, thing. And I know it's putting yourself out there and risking being yelled at or risking being in, in, in embarrassed. But, you know, if you if you can save a life as a result of sharing some knowledge, you know, you never know. So. No, I agree. And it's something I kind of advocate on on the on the microcosm of the world that is on YouTube as well. Um, you know, if 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 we if you see people uh, on YouTube posting videos of drone flying and they're doing something wrong and it, you kind of get the feeling it's from ignorance, then, you know, maybe a private message and maybe offer some help or support and advice to do it right. And if you see people who are obviously just the arrogant kind of guys who are going to get us all into trouble, call them out. Put them yeah. on the comments. Um, so a group of us did get together last year when we had some horrendous footage of someone deliberately masking their LEDs on a drone and then flying over an international airport in 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 the towards the east of Europe, and yeah. a whole group of us, you know, called them out on it. Uh, got in touch with the airport via Twitter, whatever, and you know, they took yeah. it down. Now, my concern wasn't that they'd done it. That's for the local authorities, but it's a bad. It's the yeah. bad reputation. It just cements it. Um, awesome. And the other thing that, that that I think you're looking for as well is some some more pilots for your effectively your database of professionals yeah. who are in yeah, the we've, UK we've who got... have their CAA permission who are qualified to fly in the UK. Yeah, I think um, you know I've got uh, I've got some British heritage my, my, via Australia. You guys sent us over there at <laughs> an early yeah, point you, in history. You keep coming back. <laughs> But uh, that that being said, um, the uh, um, uh, sorry, we're, we're, I got distracted. I apologize. What was my point? <laughs> I, I did, hey, listen, this is you, this is your fault. <laughs> Don't you blame me? No, no, you uh, you wanted uh, you wanted some uh, you wanted to get some oh, yeah, more um, CAA right, right, pilot. authorized pilots on the yes. on the on the. So books. we've got 104 approved as of today. 104 uh, UK pilots. There's a lot more uh, CAA B BNUC BNUC dash S um, uh, uh, approved pilots over there. We we'd like to find you and uh, you know by all means uh, join up and uh, make sure you're profile is fully complete and we'll uh we'll add you to our our database so cool and that's that's at airvid.com airvid.com with and without a dash uh, both with and with, you, 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 you bought all the all the possible permutations yeah, of that domain exactly obviously. patrick that's fantastic um, um thank you very much for your time thank you for your enthusiasm we could go on for hours and yes. we may we may <laughs> well do um but i think we we need to we need to realize that people have got other things in their life other youtube yeah. videos to watch but no that's that's really great i've really enjoyed it thank you very much for your time Good. thank you for your positivity and uh, about the drones and 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 the future um yep. And 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 let's um, let's let's all do our bit to to kind of, you know, promote the positive side and make sure that whenever we're flying, whatever it is, one of these or one of those that's behind you, or a bit bit of a big brother, that we that we do it in the right way that that makes people realise that you know, these things should be around to to stay and uh, and we should all do our bit to 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 make that happen. Absolutely, and thank you very much for what you're doing. I follow your show. I think you're great, and uh, and thank you so much for having me participate. I appreciate no, it. No, you're very welcome, Patrick uh, Egan. Thank okay. you very much indeed, and thank you guys for watching. Um, please, if you've got any uh, specific questions or comments for Patrick, you can put them down below. I'm, he's going to sort of keep an eye on the comments when when this goes up. Uh, obviously, visit airvid.com and visit the uavha.com websites. But thank you very much for your time from uh, from me and from Patrick in Canada. Um, good night. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wait, wait. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs>